What is up, down and sideways, all you absolutely lovely individuals of this lovely planet? My name is Eric Flying Han Solo on today's Epi of League Unlock. Because hey, I hope you enjoyed your two, three day break because games right back into action, elimination matches on the line, and something. This is the point of the tournament where NA and EU come together and can at least agree after we see head-to-head -head matchups that they're not ready for the LPL or the LCK, that they have no chance against them. Case and point, Fnatic versus Cloud9. Ten years since their first matchup at Worlds way back in 2013. Obviously, uh, most of the players, I think all of the players, uh, that were matching up then have all since retired. That's right. None of them still on the rift. Makes sense because it was a decade ago. Had this matchup in semifinals of 2018 where Caps and Co. completely uh, poo-pooed on Cloud9 and the squad in semi. So a long, one of the longest storied rivalries that we have between NA and EU. And thank goodness we at least were guaranteed a three-game set between these two, and uh, let's let's just go through each game because we've seen Fudge get a whole lot of attention at this tournament from Blabber and Zvan and everybody else on Cloud9, and in game one, it was absolutely that case on the Rumble pick, which has annihilated both the LCS and the LEC so far at this event, and... Fudge got a whole lot of attention. I think 4-0 or 7-1. and It was actually he started. He did end up dying in one of these trades. But 7-1, and he was so unbelievably disgustingly fed that uh, perhaps a more solid and cohesive team might have been closing this game out sub-20 minutes or at the very least early 20 minutes uh, because Berserker was just left to farm for the majority of the game. It was already a 5K gold lead. 4C9 pre 20 minutes. Everything looking great for what should be an easy, calm, cool, collected LCS win, but nah, nah. that's just not how they do it down in North America. Despite a clean dive on these inner turrets on both Oscar Inn and Noah, leading to an ace. Uh, Cloud9, and again, this is what the LCS has struggled with for years is closing games out. And even with a Baron to their name. Eventually, Cloud9 gets one swiped out from under their noses, courtesy of Mr. Razork on the Lee Sin, despite Jimenez trying to kill him so that he can't do anything. He hops in, steals the Baron, hops out. Trimby ends up going down, but this delayed the game by legitimately 15 minutes. Now, all of a sudden, it's 40 minutes into this game by the time Cloud9 is finally able to close it out it's still a 10k gold lead but it just put such heavy breaks on c9 actually being able to close out this game and uh not the cleanest but they take the game one win and obviously again the huge emphasis on fudge on that uh rumble getting things going for them blabber giving him plenty of attention and Amen has actually, despite a few whoopsie alties on the Yone, actually has one of his best performances that he's had so far at Worlds, which I know is not saying much after the first three games, but nonetheless, looks good. We go into game two, where this time Fudge getting a little bit of uh, love from the other team early on as Razor comes in on the J4, and this is a play... The game was even up until this point. It was back and forth a bit, but the gold lead was even. Berserker ulties to go for Noah. If he ulties up top to help out the rest of his team because Jimenez survives for so long on this Cassante, eventually runs away and gets chased down. Berserker can't do anything against Noah. He doesn't even need to flash to survive. So if Berserker had ulted to the top lane, I don't know, maybe this fight goes a little bit differently, but it ends up going into control of Fnatic, but it's only a 2k gold lead, but still Cloud9 decides that it's it's desperation time, so we're going to force this crazy Baron. They get it down to 5k health, and then they all just run out of the pits. Ven goes back in, gets an engage, but guess what? It doesn't matter because nobody's there. Fnatic says TY for the leash boys, and gets basically a free Baron. They don't end up losing anybody. Uh, Oscar in and out, even hops over and is unable to be taken down um, by Fudge. So a cool uh, three kills 
And they chase down Berserker for the fourth and the Baron. That is an absolute disaster class. This time it is NA flipping up the Baron uh, for them to get. They do eventually find a nice flank and are able to take down Umanoid on the Cinder. But guess what? That's Noah on Zeri at full health untouched with two tanks trying to take him down uh, not happening noah cleans this one up even though he's shooting some autos backwards it doesn't matter because rhizork is so tanky and Fnatic is able to close the game out not in 40 minutes when they're gifted a baron in fact it's sub 30 minutes for them to tie this series at uh, which means we don't get silver scrapes because it's only best of three we get you know maybe bronze scrapes or wood iron scrapes is what we get going into this third game which again had a little bit of a back and forth early game uh this time the rumble is going over to oscar Rinnan, and fudge gets a 2-0 start on the jack so you think maybe he's gonna snowball and have a big impact on this game or maybe zven won't get caught out all the time on alistair well you would be wrong on both accounts first it's blabber and the theme of this third game is cloud nine just walking around wandering aimlessly getting caught out and dying Sven dies there after blabber dies and then again it is a late tp from fudge he's just pushing top into the turret i don't know why he doesn't tp earlier when this is sole point on the line for Fnatic. finally do engage now it's a 5v4 but Fnatic's happy to do it because they still have so many alties up and they are unable to kill Noah. He gets so low but has the Severum for a little bit of help. Berserker does his very best but cannot take the Aphelios down. A 2-0 Fudge has no impact on this fight. Noah even gets the last lap with a little kill there. Now all of a sudden it's a 1k gold lead for Fnatic and... Uh, well, it's barely even a 1k goalie, but this is four Infernal Souls, so they're forced into fighting here. Our Cloud9 and Fudge is zoning the Rel. Okay, but that's the support. The rest of your team is dying. Fudge, what are you doing? He's the Fed member on the squad, and look at the damage number he does in this team fight. Point one. Berserker tried his best doing that 4k, and then now they got Infernal Soul. They have to flip over Elder. Sven's going for an actual, you know, 200 IQ high Mission Impossible Metal Gear Solid type stuff from 2014. And it might have worked, but Jimenez face checks a bush and dies. Sven, I think it's about two minutes of game time that he clocks waiting in that bush. And then ultimately just ends up TPing. But maybe it would have worked if Jimenez didn't face check. But let's be honest, the LeBlanc had basically no impact on this game. It feels like this is a game from three months ago that Cloud9 is drafted for. No one's picking LeBlanc anymore. It ends up actually being a close closeout because again, Berserker is doing everything in his human capabilities to keep Cloud9 at Worlds, but he just can't get it done against the Elder Dragon buff and Blabber. Look how low Humanoid is. Maybe Cloud9 holds on for a couple more minutes if they're able to kill him, but the supers are just storming in, two in hibs down, and Humanoid, we know Silas has some absolutely insane sustain. He eventually is gonna kill Blabber, survive against Sven. Fnatic closes out the series 2-1. Not, you know, a lot of bad mistakes out of Fnatic, uh, or sorry, out of Cloud9, less mistakes out of Fnatic. You're feeling okay about them, but again, seeing these two go head-to-head -head just really makes you think, God, how are they supposed to compete against some of these Eastern squads from the LPL and the LCK if this is the power level that we've got going forward uh, out of the West? I know these are the kind of the middle tier two, three spot squads from EU and NA, but oh, Cloud9, that was a, a rough performance. You kind of knew, and people were talking about it, when it took them 20 minutes to close out that first game that, I mean, if, if it takes you that long with that type of a lead, what happens when you don't have a 10k gold lead uh, by 25 minutes? And what happens is you lose two straight games. And now we got Fnatic advancing, Cloud9, the second NA team to be sent home. Last a little bit longer than Team Liquid uh, because they drew more EU squads. It's really... Uh, the reality of that one so Fnatic advances cloud nine sent packing but could eu complete the dream of a 2-0 day advancing to the next round it was it was a lot more of their work cut out for them uh for mad lions who were obviously absolutely massive underdogs against weibo compared to what Fnatic was against c9 but apparently 
Nobody told Niski because my boy Ness quick on the Silas in this game. We said El Yoya needs some help. He needs maybe the bot lane to step up. I wasn't expecting Niski to absolutely hand it to Xiaohu in this first game. My man starting 4-0. Yes, El Yoya was giving him a whole lot of attention, but he got really disgustingly fed and was one shot in people across the board uh, on this Silas pick. Obviously, plenty excuse me, of good ulties to be stealing the Ari, the Rel. I mean, the Kalista is kind of useless. The Renata, not bad, but uh, look at Mad Lions go. Even the Shy coming in on a pretty fed Aatrox, full HP, ulti roaring. He's just in the bounce house and is unable to do anything. Nine to four start for Mad Lions, but it never actually led up to a huge gold lead. Then Weibo forces the fight into the Baron. And despite Chasey getting a damn good engage on the Cassante, everybody hops out of Weibo. And Zhaohu, of all people, both smites were dead. Zhaohu, that ain't no summoner spellbook. He just goes in and steals the Baron. Two Weibo members end up surviving. And then Mad Lions say, let's go all in on this beefy boy Aatrox with all the disgusting shielding and healing and we're not even able to kill him. We popped the ignite, we burned everything on him for nothing. Niski gets blown up. He has all the money for Mad Lions and then Karzy's got a, you know, 1v4 scenario when he's trying to flash and do something, but he can't. It's an ace over to Weibo. They didn't close the game out from there, but again, Hill is saying, what are you doing? He tries to hex flash in front of the shy, gets popped, and that was in a 5v4. Weiwei had gotten caught out before that, so that was the advantage for Mad Lions. It then becomes a 4v4, and Weibo says, yeah, we like those odds. Uh, Xiaohu gets a little bit of revenge as Niski, with flash up, is just unable to really do anything in that fight. Light absolutely took over these team fights on the Kalista. He got fed early, and he got fed often after that as uh, Weibo would eventually close it up from there. But man, Mad Lions had all the tools to win this first game, mainly because Niski was so unbelievably fed, but they just get out team fought by an LPL squad, which is a tale as old as time. And you know, after such a dominant shellacking at the hands of Niski, he didn't even call him a genius. You know, Zhaohu was going to be upset uh, in that second game and Absolutely, you can see it. And after Hillisang gets caught out multiple times on the Alistair in that first game, he goes in an even more scary, squishy pick with the Soraka Kalista bot lane. A bit of a wacky one. Uh, but we got we got a barn burner six minutes in as it ends up being a three for two here uh, for El Yoya. And again, it's light contributing to three of those kills. He gets so fed. And then Hillisang, this is... This isn't solo queue, man. Why, why are you sticking around to get XP on the Soraka and gets another kill over to the Aphelios who got so much money early on. And then the nerves, the Jimbly Wimbly's come in. Chasey needs to land one Q. It's even a pretty predictable sidestep from the Shy. He just hits different in those 1v1s. He's on the Aatrox again, even more fed to start the game here uh, than game one. And there's Xiaohu getting some Nico revenge. The flash pop blossom to catch out a couple. Hillisang is left running away as that little medic Soraka. And all of a sudden, the snowball has fully begun as again just like game one they didn't learn they engage on the shy's aatrox and oh look he's a beefy dude who survives has a whole lot of lifesteal another two-man pop blossom out of Xiaohu. this isn't even soul point but it just feels like mad lions are throwing darts at the wall hoping something sticks and they force an engage that is perhaps ill-advised and even with a good flank here out of El Yoya, he gets right onto light but there's absolutely nobody there to follow up they cannot get through that front line of the shy and way way on the rel 28 minutes in 19 kills to five this one was not close from the get-go Niski he had that good run in the first game but Weibo absolutely getting the last laugh here it is a 2-0 and the shy look at the boy's not even sweating Neither of them are sweating. He's just playing a couple Aatrox games. He had a fun time. Um, I mean, yeah, Mad Lions. You knew after such a dominant, great start to game one when they were unable to come away with that win. Much like the Cloud9 series, 
you, you figured how this was going to play out after that first game. Uh, they gave everything they did in that first one. Weibo comes back and says, okay, that's all you got. We're going to stomp, steamroll, roll over you in game three, or game two, excuse me. The bot lane was, oh my, I mean, Karzi's down 40 CS in that first game. Then he plays Kalista on the other side. Light gets fed, uh, basically two and a half. I'm, I'm counting assists as half a kill. Uh, kills pre-10 minutes because Hillisang had one of his worst series that he's had, not just on um, Mad Lions, but in the last... Five plus years, he did not have a good time. Chasey missing some key moments. And as kind of expected heading into this matchup, it was just kind of a huge gap across the board. But in terms of competitiveness going forward, you wanted Weibo to win and advance to the next round. Maybe they'll slay another EU squad if they match up against Fnatic. But Weibo, we've been waiting to slowly level up. They're not there yet. Again, this is just... This is just Mad Lions, a team they were expected to beat, but they got business done moving on to the next round. So that's two EU teams gone now, two NA teams heading back to the airport at Worlds before the knockout round, which is surprising to absolutely no one. But there's still, there's still three squads with that Western hope. And again, if you're feeling down on the day as an NA fan or a Western team, you're guaranteed one in top eight. So don't worry, potentially still two. You could be getting there, so don't sweat it. I mean, dream scenario, you have whoever loses out of G2 NRG match up against Fnatic in that next round. And then all of a sudden you go, we got two Western teams guaranteed. Two opportunities to get 3 out in those quarters. You probably don't want that for competitive integrity and, you know, as a selling point for this new format. But it's still possible that two Western squads could advance to that top eight before we're looking, talking about all these other squads, let's go back and we'll give a bit of a eulogy for both Cloud9 and the Mad Lions. And more, more than just a eulogy, we look forward to the future because what happens now with these squads and more importantly, what happens with Cloud9 because this core has now been around for several years when you're talking Fudge, Blabber, and Sven specifically. And if it's me... It's time for some changes. Uh, I think you, you've seen the highest you can reach here. I know Amenes didn't have uh, a great series, but priorities going into the offseason now, if you're Cloud9, number one, you got to keep Berserker. I, I know he tweeted before this, if we lose today, maybe it's a military angle. The guy's 20 years old. Maybe he just doesn't want to be an NA anymore. And honestly, would you blame him? Absolutely not either. He could get a spot on an LCK middle tier team uh, or... Maybe he wants to do his military service and just take a break from competitive. But if you're Cloud9, you're doing everything in your power to convince this dude to stay another year. Say, we'll build around you. What support do you want? We just want to make sure that you're on the squad because he is still the star highlight of this roster. So let's say you can hold on to him, bring him back. Also, absolutely bring him back Blabber. Resident jungler still one of if not the best in na actually had some solid performances this year internationally he is the captain he is the face of cloud nine and one of the faces of na so blabber and berserker are honestly the only two of this starting five that i'm saying must start uh, must bring back that you're building this core around zven i he says he's figured this role out but i still feel like there are better resident young supports that you could try in na or someone to import over that will be a mild to massive improvement over him and man as when you talk about the mid lane we know i mean it sounds like he thought he was going to be out before this tournament potentially and i i don't see an avenue where he's returning next year on this cloud nine roster priority number two after keeping berserker you got to throw all the money you got at jojo pian i know um number one all five of these Cloud9 members are still under contract uh, for 2024 and beyond for some of them. But we know contracts don't mean anything because JoJo is under contract with EG through 2024. But that's only one year you got to be buying him out of. I think keep Berserker, throw money to get JoJo Pian over to Cloud9. Uh, a resident mid laner who just won MVP is the most hyped young player in the LCS and you pair him with Blabber, Blabber Jojo is the best mid jungle duo that is resident domestic players from NA that we'll have ever had. 
you got to get it together. Two psycho play styles working together. Then you look at those support and top lane positions. A couple of free agents that will be available in the top lane. You got both someday. Okay, he had an okay year on 100 Thieves. Not his peak by any means. Or you got big dokes. We'll see how Worlds plays out. Maybe NRG want to sign him to a big deal when they get a run all the way to finals before they get 3 out. Yeah, yeah, I know. A little bit of hopium. Not going to happen. Uh, but Dokla has been a star on NRG. And that's another guy who's not going to take up an import slot if he's looking for greener pastures or he's built up uh, a payday that maybe NRG doesn't want to pay. Maybe Cloud9 doesn't want either. But that's an angle you go for the top lane because Fudge, you, you absolutely saw at this event how many resources were poured in, how much attention he was given and wasn't able to get it done. And now that's a few years where he... It feels like he's peaked, perhaps, of what you were able to get out of him. So, guy like Dokla, don't think we've seen the peak out of him. Someday, the consistent level is just one of the all-time highs uh, for the LCS. Then, when you get to supports, I feel like a Dark Horse one you could throw in. Well, number one, uh, Vulcan is uh, open. He's uh, not under contract anymore for FlyQuest. It was just a one-year or half-a-year type kind of deal. Maybe he wants to return. Maybe you don't want to dive back into uh, Vulcan being on the squad. But the other guy I'd be looking at if I was Cloud9 is Mr. Chime from the newly acquired Shopify Rebellion. I don't know who they're going to be keeping on their roster. I don't know who they're going to be getting rid of. But he's a guy, even when TSM was looking rough, that he had some stand-up performances. I think still a young player that you can groom with a veteran squad that you'll have uh, in Cloud9. I love throwing him in there and letting him grow with the Cloud9 organization with an all-star MVP level 80 carry, assuming you're keeping Berserker. All of a sudden, you got four domestic players with one import and Berserker. That, that is not only going to be the fan favorite in the LCS, but absolutely have the potential to make some noise. Either way, I don't see how this core is staying together for Cloud9 after another somewhat disappointing end to the World Championship. But let's just pray this offseason. We get JoJo and Blabber on C9 because that would be the most exciting timeline. But that is it today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric. Thank you all you beautiful people for watching as always. And we'll catch you on that flippity flip.